Using the Internet as a teaching tool is becoming more common in classrooms today. But the Internet is full of uncensored content that is inappropriate for children and the classroom environment. Congress created a federal law for schools and libraries in 2000 to regulate the amount of offensive material accessible by students on the Internet. This law is called CIPA, the Children's Internet Protection Act. Many schools and libraries receive special funding for their Internet access through a program called E-Rate. The Federal Communications Commission states that before schools and libraries can receive their E-Rate funds, they must comply with any requirements and guidelines set forth through CIPA. These guidelines include adopting a technology protection measure and implementing an Internet safety policy. A technology protection measure is a specific technology, usually a software program, that blocks or filters Internet access. The program must protect students from accessing visual images that are obscene, pornographic, or harmful to minors. In schools, it must also monitor the activities of minors. The filters will function for both students and staff and can only be disabled by adults working on research or for other lawful purposes. An Internet Safety Policy is a procedural guideline instated by your school district that dictates how Internet safety will be maintained in your school. The guideline has mandatory requirements. Once your school has an Internet Safety Policy in place, it is obligated to provide public notice of the policy, as well as hold at least one public hearing to discuss the policy and the chosen technology measure. There is still much debate over whether or not Internet filtering can block all inappropriate content for students. In some instances, they may also filter out good content. If the latter is a concern, in some instances, the best thing might be to set the blocking level at the lowest or intermediate levels and block only the categories necessary for compliance. This will help reduce possible over-blocking. How much have you learned about SIPA so far? Choose the best answer to the question. So what should you do to make sure your classroom is SIPA safe? First, you should educate yourself and your students. Learn how to improve your search skills and to teach smart search skills to your students. This will help prevent accidental accessing of inappropriate material. It is also important to monitor all electronic communications such as email and chat rooms. You need to be aware of what your students are accessing. Also, make sure you and your students can recognize and remove spam, which is unsolicited junk email sent to large numbers of people to promote certain goods or services. One danger with spam is that some of the junk emails can contain computer viruses. Spam email also often contains explicit information that is not appropriate for children. Some spam contains material of fraudulent or criminal intent. The list includes some ways to prevent spam. Another way to make your classroom SIPA compliant is to inform the parents of their child's activities. Because your technology protection measure must monitor students, the parents have a right to access their child's Internet records. Also, be sure to let the parents and students know that all email sent by the students can be tracked and monitored. SIPA guidelines and filtering options are constantly being revised and updated. Be sure to stay alert to your school district's actions. Policy standards may be re-evaluated and changed and software filters may be updated, so it is important to stay informed. The Internet is a tool that offers a world of information and communication at our fingertips. However, there is also unsafe and adult content on the Internet, and children need to be protected from it. The guidelines in SIPA help protect children from accessing such content while they use the Internet at schools and libraries. As an educator, you should be aware of SIPA guidelines and how they can be applied in your classroom. 
Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.